Uh, uh, do you breathe? Uh, it's Ron and I did not intend to do as much walking around as I am today and there's really not much of a story about that. They, uh, one bus was about 10 minutes later than it should have been, so 10 minutes later than it usually is as well, so that's something. And so then I very suddenly had to change some plans, but no big deal there. It happens. So I figure while I have to walk to this bus stop that I would really like to take, I'd like to not have to walk the rest of the way to my preferred destination, but it's also possible I will do that. So here are some words of wisdom that I have to impart on you. First, real life is what happens when things don't go the way you want them to. You will eventually learn this. Hopefully sooner than some people will. Words of wisdom number two. There are three plants which I would say are wax begonias, marigolds, and hostas like all variety of pasta that don't so much add to a house's curb appeal as much as they say the one in charge of the garden here yeah they'll kill anything that touches the dirt whether they like it or not because you know, everybody with a black thumb I know always has those in front they can't keep anything else alive. Yeah. And whether they admit it or not, if you have a friend who has any combination of those three in the front of their house, or even in the back garden, if they don't admit it, then trust me, that that is why they have those. Nobody else has those because they like them. Uh, maybe very few people have those because they like them, but I've yet to meet that person. If I think of more, I'll come back to this. If not, oh well. Gosh, I, I can't, I can't justify the cost right now because after, uh, oh gosh, but Murnau would love this. Murnau would love this. So it's a, uh, it's a space station. So there's a, there's a little cardboard scratcher thing in here, but you know, that can probably be replaced with something. I don't know. We can figure it out. But yeah, Murnau, Murnau, I don't even know if Murnau would like the trackball that's in it. Or maybe it's trackball capable. I don't know. Looks like it should have a trackball, but I'm not seeing it. Yeah, yeah, it says it should. But I've never seen a cat older than like six months actually play with a trackball. <laughs> I've, I've never seen them. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure some cats do. They still make them, right? Uh, but yeah, he would just love sitting in this and just like swiping a paw through one of the holes at one of the old, older two. He'd love this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh dear. Uh, maybe they can have it for my birthday. I don't know. I I need to think about if I, my budget can handle it. Ah, <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, uh, as to why I didn't continue the words of wisdom while I was out, that's because my camera was suddenly running out of charge. Well, my phone was running out of charge, which my camera is in my phone. So, that's why you get to come home with me and watch me fill out my pill pods. So, uh, continued words of wisdom, I think I would have to say, uh, don't trust any goth who says that the film Beetlejuice is, and I quote, pointless and stupid and lame. This was not said by the ex. By the way, 
you know, that's one of the things that, um, that's one of the things that was actually, like, halfway reasonable about Isaac. Is, let me rephrase that. Um, his feelings on the film Beetlejuice were halfway right, and, uh, but he was just, like, far too forgiving of, uh, Burton's um, Alice movies, and I know he wasn't, um, I know he had, a uh, minimal involvement with the script itself, those were by, oh crap, and I even looked it up on my way home, too, Linda, Linda something or other, I'm gonna look it up and put her full name here, and the, um, I don't know, uh, there's something about the Alice movies that I think I, I don't feel like his heart was in it. it there's something about them that, uh, you know, the, uh, the Tim Burton Alice movies with uh, Disney and all that shit, uh, that feels very rushed, that, um, and, you know, like, when you compare it to other films he did in that decade, now, I'm not quite sure exactly what year uh, Sweeney Todd was, but... Uh, that had to have only been, like, maybe a year or two prior the, uh, um, you know, he did just, like, two, three films in a row. No, three, four films in a row that just were awful. No, I think only three. I think only three. Um, I'm a little bit more forgiving of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory than a lot of people are, uh, in part because... It's a lot closer to the book. I like the fact that he actually used the songs that were in the book, but there were a lot of missed opportunities, I believe. Um, I also like uh, a lot of people were uh, really, really creeped out by the uh, um, just Deep Roy as the Oompa Loompas, like all the Oompa Loompas. Um, but I think, I think that was one of the things that he absolutely did right. Um, he absolutely did that right, because um, when you read Dahl's books, there was something a little unsettling about coming into the factory, like, and, like, while the Oompa Loompas all seemed, you know, very content with their work, uh, there was just something a little unsettling about it. There was something very unsettling about it, um, especially when you consider that this was basically slave labor, because they worked for chocolate and were relatively happy to, but... Um, and, and I think, I think Tim hit a lot of notes on that, that the, uh, that the 1973 film starring Gene Wilder missed, but, um, I don't know, both films have a lot of hits and misses regarding the, uh, um, being able to capture the feeling of the book, um, by Dahl, and, uh, and this... And Burton's is actually the only film made with the blessing of Dahl's widow, I believe. Uh, Dahl hated the first movie. He really did. He, he, he died despising that film. Uh, like, to the point where they had to change the name of the film. Like, they technically had the rights to it, but just to, um, stay in the good graces, in Dahl's good graces, they, uh, they changed the songs, a lot of the songs anyway, and, um, uh, and they, uh, and they altered the name of the film slightly. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is one of those films, especially by Tim Burton, but, you know, just like, in general, that's one of those films where everything is perfect. I would argue that Sweeney Todd is another one of those, but I'm not about... I, I'm not in the mood for that argument. Um, you can feel free to argue that amongst yourselves in the comments if you'd like, but uh, Beetlejuice is one of those films where everything works. If you try to imagine anything different, it becomes harder to imagine it working as well as it does. Is it possible that there could have been a couple different actors, or possibly, um, like if he'd chosen a different Harry Belafonte song, uh, we could argue that it could have worked. I mean, it's also possible he could have chosen, you know, a different version of that 
No, I don't think anybody else did a different version of Deo. I think that was Belafonte. Um, at least not... I think other people have since covered it, but I think uh, I think Belafonte was the only one to do a version of that in the 60s when it was first really popular. But, uh... I mean, he could have picked another singer to... Uh, yeah, because they also uh, used his uh, Shake Signora uh, at the end. Yeah, I mean, you, we could argue that... You know, maybe they could have picked a different, you know, singer from that era with that level of kitsch appeal attached to him, um, or them. I mean, yeah, it's, would it have worked just as well with, say, Petula Clark songs? Possibly. But then which two Pe Petula Clark songs? I mean, we'd have to, like, go through... Uh, it's just very hard to imagine that film, like, doing anything differently could have hurt it greatly. And the reason I specified, you don't want to trust a goth who thinks that the film Beetlejuice is stupid, uh, because, like it or not, he is one of us. Not Beetlejuice necessarily, though I, I do appreciate seeing the, uh, the Beetlejuice-inspired looks every once in a while at the club. And I'm not, not talking, like, costume. I'm talking, like, just, like, you know, take some inspiration from the look for, you know, one of your club looks. But, uh, you know, like it or not, whether he likes it or not, Tim Burton is one of us. It's, uh, it's just one of those facts of life, and we all have to accept it. Now, I'm not saying that Beetlejuice has to be one of your favorite movies ever, but I am saying that y you have to at least admit that if anything else was different, it, it would have destroyed the film. And you had to you have to admit that this is one of those stories. Like uh, a friend of mine uh, is not, while she loves Beetlejuice, and it is one of her movie her favorite movies. Um, she is, she does not consider herself a Tim Burton fan overall, because she finds that a lot of his films, um, um, like Edward Scissorhands and another one, um, actually, like, um, his version of the, uh, of, of the Chocolate Factory movie, uh, <laughs> his whole little side plot that was not involved in the book about, you know, Wonka's past, that also carries a very similar theme of, you know, if you're not normal, you'll never be happy. And she thinks that comes up in a lot of his films. Uh, but Beetlejuice lacks that. In fact, it says the exact opposite. It is one of those films that encourages you to embrace the weird. And yeah, it may lead you down some places that you didn't expect, that you maybe didn't think everything qu through quite as well, but it is always better at the end of the day to just embrace the weird. And we see what becomes of this at the end when Oh crap! How can I forget their, um, how can I forget their names? Shit. The uh, the 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 ghosts, the original house owners. God damn it! I remember the Dietzes. I can't remember the Gina, Gina Davis and uh, uh, whatever. But you know who I'm talking about. It was when, like, both families, basically, um, just decided. You know what? We're just gonna embrace the weird. We're just gonna embrace the weird. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna, um, they're gonna have as much, if not a more. Uh, those two were going to take over the more parental role with Lydia, where and um, oh crap, I'm forgetting the, uh, I'm forgetting her stepmother's name. You know who I'm talking about. She didn't want to be a parent anyway, and Lydia's father was more into what, you know, just, like, lazing about, at, you know, than being a parent anyway, so, <laughs> uh, they died before, you know, the Gina Davis and, is it Rick Moranis? God damn it, I need to watch that movie again.
you know, they died before they could have a parent. They were even thinking about, you know, having a kid. They were talking about that before their car fell into the river and they drowned. And, um, and the, the Deets parents, they're not interested in being parents. And Lydia, she just wants parents she can relate to. And so, like, everybody is so much happier at the end when they realize, you know what, we just needed to just embrace this and let it all hang out. And yeah, that, that, <laughs> that troublemaker there, he, um, he, he kind of was the catalyst in, you know, like, helping us realize that this is just what we needed in life to embrace the weird. And that is why you should never trust a goth who does not at least appreciate the film Beetlejuice for what it is, which is that it is, if Tim Burton is proud of no other films he's ever done, he should absolutely be proud of Beetlejuice. But yeah, that is, that is a modern clap. Oh god, that film's going, that film's, oh shit. <sighs> that film is 30 years old. Yeah, it's... I, I can't really say modern classic, because we... Uh, a lot of people like to think of a modern classic as under 20 years old, and that is definitely... Uh, that's, that's 30 years old either this year or next year, so... That is definitely a classic at this point. And... It's one of few movies to have... A uh, near perfect score on Rotten Tomatoes, and um, I actually can't remember um, <laughs> uh, what the uh, what the reactions to it were like when it first came out. I was a bit young um, at the time, but I do very much remember watching the cartoon. Um, when that came out, maybe two years after the film. Um, and, uh, hi, what you doing? What you doing? We're now. What's up? No, you don't get to play with pills. These are mine, and you can't have them. These are not for kitties, trust me. Trust me. Little kitty cat, trust me. Ah. So, uh, words of wisdom four. Do I have a fourth in this list? I don't know. I'll think of something. Let's say, unless you have a legit medical reason you really do not need to wash your hair more than twice a week. And I say, and I point out legit medical reason, because I'm sure many of you think you do have a good reason to wash your hair daily, but the truth is, you probably don't. Um, if you wash it every day, you, yes, it will be kind of greasy um, if you don't uh, basically retrain your hair to produce the um, a reasonable amount of scalp oils. And son of a bitch, I need to tighten this spring on my timer again. Damn it. But believe it or not, uh, you can go from daily shampoos to every other day for a couple weeks, maybe a month, and then go to every third day. So, um, skip two days and then a third day. And, uh, do every fourth day for a couple of weeks to a month, two to four weeks. Every fifth day, every sixth day, every week. Um, some people can go as many as ten days between shampoos, depending on the length of the hair and, you know, of course, um, how much oils their scalp produces regularly. 
but most people, believe it or not, you don't need to wash your hair more than twice a week unless you have a legit medical reason. Me, I try to aim for two to three times a week, uh, but that is because I have a skin condition. That is because I have chronic to severe plaque psoriasis. And as somebody with psoriasis, so what does this mean? It means that the skin on some areas of my body overproduce and, um, and build up in the form of just patchy scales, basically. I've had it on my scalp since I was about eight years old, and I did a story time about that, and that would be the one wherein we learn that Felician nuns are sadistic. I've had it on my scalp since I was about eight years old. Uh, I get patches on the sides of my nose, seasonally, usually. Uh, I get some inside my ears, usually seasonally, but apparently all year round I, uh, I'm getting it on my knees, on um, this arm, not quite my elbow, but yeah, right around here, and on my left foot. So I apparently had no real idea how I was going to end that video after I rescued my dinner from uh, some minor burns in the oven. But anyway, it was edible. It was perfectly edible. But, uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, I wash my hair more than once a week because, like I said, I try to aim for two to three times a week, uh, simply because the, um, the medication that I put on my scalp, it builds up pretty fast as do the, uh, as, as does the psoriasis skin, so, so like, eh, you know, just to, uh, keep the, um, the medicated areas a bit clean. Uh, so, actually, I had, um, five wise phrases, and, uh, I don't know, uh, to summarize. Hi, kitty. Uh, to summarize. How did I suddenly forget the first one already? Oh wait, yeah, L real life is what happens when things don't go the way you expect them to, or want them to, or hope they will. Uh, number two, marigolds, wax begonias, and especially hostas are a surefire way to assure everybody watching that you will kill anything else that touches your garden. Just keep that in mind. Uh, if that is indeed what you want to convey, because it's true, be my guest. But, um, most people would rather convey something a little bit different. Uh, item three. You will never see a cat older than six months play with a trackball toy. I, I, you just don't. You just don't. I'm sure there's one weird cat out there who is still entertained by the fact that you bat the ball and it comes right back around, and then you bat the ball and it comes right back around. I'm sure you will eventually meet that one cat who might be a little bit challenged in the head and therefore can be perfectly entertained with a trackball toy for 20 years of his life, but generally speaking, over the age of six months, at most, kittens will just stop playing with them. I, I, they're, they're a lousy investment as far as cat toys go, and like, uh, you, you're just better off buying other things for your cats to play with, uh, something that you'll definitely get a lot more, you know, months at the very least of use out of. Just, just putting that out there. Four, uh, don't trust any goth especially who does not appreciate the film Beetlejuice. Like I said, it doesn't have to be your favorite movie, just you have to appreciate what is being said with this. And number five, you really don't need to wash your hair more than twice a week 
unless you have some kind of medical reason, such as applying clobetazole to your scalp twice daily, and it still barely keeps the scales at bay. Uh, uh, that's about it. Bats and kisses, sweethearts, and hashtag toilet goth. Take care of yourselves. Have the exact kind of day you deserve. Bye-bye.